So maybe as a way of getting started, um, for the benefit of people who haven't read your writing, you could um, just give us a, a, a quick couple of minute definition of what life streams means and what mirror world means and how you came to pick those, those terms. Um, mirror worlds is a term that goes back, um, as, as all these do, uh, a long way to the late 1980s, um, uh, when the internet, of course, was already a done deal, but before um, the web as we know it had emerged. And um, it, it, it looked as if potentially it could be a tremendously powerful uh, facilitator of the interface between human beings in a very crotchety real world of institutions that um, uh, are, are over complex and, and uh, involve all sorts of crazy protocols in dealing with. So um, by a mirror world, I thought of, um, I thought of the idea of, of uh, reality, um, real world life being mirrored in the surface of the cybersphere, the way um, a town is mirrored in the still surface of a mill pond. This is a, this is a New England only image, I'm sorry, but I, <laughs> um, so you have a, t a town, you know, it's a whole cluster of white buildings and, and, and a church probably, and there's a, a mill pond, and, and the reflection is real time. I mean, this is a real time mirroring, mirroring process. You take that for granted, and that's what we wanted. We, um, we wanted to know to what extent we could put software up that um, gave me an alternative, an alternative view on reality so that I could deal with reality by means of the software. Um, knowing, by the way, I mean, this is something we, we thought about from the beginning, knowing that this was a mixed blessing. I mean, it could be great uh, in some ways, in many ways, a tremendously powerful uh, aid to um, getting the most out of human institutions. It also, uh, uh, layers a level of indirection between you and the people you deal with, and that can be bad, and for that matter, the institutions you deal with. But that was our, uh, that was our intention. Um, Livestream is a project that sort of came out of um, what we were doing with Mirror Worlds, which was uh, uh, our ambition was always to build software. We were a software group, and we built it to the extent we could. Um, generally, we were focused on... Um, uh, uh, problems that we needed to solve. It was clear to us, as far as live streams go, um, by, the, by the late 80s, conventional file systems were breaking down. Um, mailers were, were being swamped. And, and that was true really only, with, only within the technological community, parts of the business community. But it was obvious the direction in which things were moving. It was obvious that, that the hierarchical file system, which was a brilliant idea when it... Um, when, if you trace it to Unix, if you trace it to Multis, whatever, it was a brilliant idea. At one point, nonetheless, tracking as it does, uh, the 1940s steel case file cabinet and folders and files, and, and, and with its view of life as a series of bureaucratic filing decisions, uh, <laughs> few, people, few, few people aspire to grow up to become file clerks. And um, it, 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 it wasn't working. Mailers weren't working. There was too much stuff online. We couldn't keep it straight. So um, I couldn't keep it straight. Uh, so um, we looked at, we meaning a research group at Yale, we looked at um, uh, a different organizing technique whereby instead of having information displayed, so to speak, if I switch now to comparing live streams to the web as it exists now, um, a standard website information is displayed in space, so to speak, laid out at, like goods on a table in an inherently static way, in a, mar a market, fruit on a table in a market, or whatever you have, dead chickens, laid out. Um, fish. Fish, fish, right. <laughs> um, it, it, instead of that um, inherently static model of information distributed over space, we were interested in information organized by time. Um, it, it seemed to us that time being the skeleton key to experience, we all live our lives in time whether we, whether we want to or not, and we generally have, time is generally a good heuristic to uh, re remembering um, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff is associated with our temporal memories. And, um, the, and it's the backbone of storytelling. And it's the backbone of storytelling. And storytelling, narrative creation being such an inherently, um, such a natural fit to the way human beings think and the way they, uh, they organize them, their memories and deal with other people. The conversation 
being in itself a, um, a version of, of a diary or narrative, also um, an interchange in time, mm -hmm. um, it seemed to us that that would be a good basis for it. a lot of factors go in and make a long story short, we came up with a live stream as representing um, ev all of my digital assets, every digital document or thing or app or whatever uh, in my life, uh, living in the cloud. I didn't want to know where it was. I didn't want to care where it was. I wanted to be able to tune it in like CNN on any adequate platform. I wanted it to be symmetric with respect to uh, time. So it would, there would be a future as well as a past. I'd, the, the, stream, the stream would flow. Um, uh, a live stream flows like other kinds of streams. So the future flows into the present, the present flows into the past, the stream flows um, at the speed of time. And rather than having a display that's inherently static, and I have to think of ways to change it, because I always do need to change it, you know, swap out this fish and put in that fish, I want to have um, a display that inherently moves and changes and is built on the idea of dynamic rather than static data. But the, but the original motivation uh, goes back again to the late 80s, the early 90s, uh, getting rid of, of the brilliant software innovations of the 1970s. I mean, Unix, a brilliant discovery in the 1970s, uh, the desktop, the, uh, uh, the, the Xerox PARC desktop. The graphical user interface. Yeah, the GUIs that exist today, a brilliant discovery in the 1970s, and of course Apple did important work in the early, a lot of companies did. That was great in the 1970s, but the, the world is, uh, the technology world is not just a little different from the 1970s, it is remarkably different. Yeah. And it's not just a matter of the hardware that's different and the, and the interconnects that are different. There's computing hardware, the communication hardware is all different. The graphics hardware, the display hardware is all different. Uh, the economics are different and most important, the user base is completely different. Mm. So now you can't get along in this country without looking at a computer every day. Certainly if you're a student in school, you can't. And um, uh, when you look at all that has changed since those remarkable breakthroughs in the 1970s say th that was then, that was great for then, but clearly we're into some new systems. We need some new systems. So is this, um, so let's fast forward now to the, the now slice of the live stream. Are, are, what are we going to see from our devices now if, if this kind of user interface you envision is, is implemented? Well, it already, I think it's fair to say that there is um, major movement, um, whether you call it on the internet, in the web, in the direction of presenting time ordered as opposed to space arranged data. Um, going black, back to a, a leap of interest in blogs uh, 10 years ago, uh, to um, all sorts of event streams, activity streams, sometimes they are called live streams, sometimes the generic term is live streaming at all the social networking sites. Um, and many other manifestations. Um, this is natural. I mean, we, we hit on it to begin with, not because it was a, an esoteric, difficult concept, but because presenting information arranged in time was, was natural. Um, some of what we, we thought was important doesn't emerge in what we're seeing today. That is a symmetry of past and future, um, uh, stream arithmetic. I always want to be able to take two streams and add them together or take a single stream and divide it into substreams. Um, I can't take two websites and add them together. And so I have a million tabs and I keep, you know, looking from one to another, which so it's like doesn't channel suit me. Sort of thing instead. Yeah, I, I'd rather take uh, the 10 that matter uh, or the 100 or the 1,000 and stream them together into a single site. Um, and I'd rather have a unit, I want to have a uniform way to focus any stream. There's a sense subtracting, that is removing stuff that I don't want searching, focusing. Um, so there is unquestionably a lot of action today moving in that direction. And part of the answer to your question, uh, where, do, where do hardware platforms go to accommodate this, is that they're al already there. I mean, um, the most important missing element when we started building the software in the mid-90s, it was uh, a PhD dissertation uh, and some smaller piece of graduate student research at Yale was the cloud component. Um, we had our own version based on a system called tuple spaces and other kinds of distributed stuff. Um, but, but that part wasn't in place. But um, 
it's in place now. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we'd like to see, as a matter of fact, we're seeing technologies in place that are not being effectively used by software. Um, we're not seeing the cloud effectively used by software. I think it's being used in a radically different way. In not a radically different way, but in a, in a more sophisticated way in the, as, as cloud operating systems evolve. Um, the hard, hard, graphics hardware and displays have changed radically, but we're seeing the same old pictures on them. Um, if I have a high definition screen with a wide aspect ratio, um, I can spare some space along the edges. I could have a stream flowing down and trickling like water down the left edge or the right edge, or I could have several of those things. Obviously, I have a good basis for 3D type of displays. I, you know, video games have much more sophisticated, do, do these things generally in a more sophisticated way than, mm -hmm. than systems. But um, we were interested and, and, and built uh, 3D uh, stream displays from the beginning, and current hardware can do that much better. We always like to think of, of the screen um, not as an opaque surface with stuff written on it in sort of the classic desktop way or a translation of the flat desktop in, into the vertical, but as a, a viewport onto a three-dimensional um, cybersphere. So all of this stuff is better supported today than it was. You, I feel like you've already laid out an incredible counter of riches for, for us to, to ask you about. Um, I hope in the course of this conversation we, we can push you on a couple of the social dimensions of, of some of your thinking, one of which would be um, privacy, which you touched on um, enticingly in, in one of your recent essays and said a much more serious subject that you'll have to return to. And then the other one would be um, the risk of, of live streams being a way of so over-personalizing the world that everyone has a unique news feed and, and there's a kind of social disintegration that happens. But maybe we can come back to those things. I want to I wanna start questions going here in, in, the, um, in the audience. So do we have mic, mic people out? OK, who, who, who wants to start the bidding? <laughs> OK. Jody Westby, Global Cyber Risk. I've had a lot of conversations with Bob Kahn about digital object architecture. And I assume that that's sort of similar to what you're talking about with data having a digital identifier and not being assigned to any one place. Are you familiar with what his work in that area for digital object architecture? Generally, yeah. And he says that the barrier to this, it's all doable. now. But the barrier is the existing infrastructure, our domain name system, all the investments around that, that there's billions of dollars flowing through these structures that are now in place, and that it's very difficult to undo that to get into a new system. So my question to you is, do you agree and do you see the existing way that we've now evolved the internet as being a barrier to its evolution to future things? Um, this is an old dispute, and as far as I'm concerned, it is a barrier, but it is a surmountable barrier. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, it's like being told 30, 40 years ago that so many billions were invested in COBOL, that PCs were, uh, you know, a waste, and there were all these data center professionals. Well, there's still a fair amount of code in COBOL, but that didn't mean that the world was going to stay fixed at this point. I mean, you know, we've seen this again and again, levels of investment in existing infrastructures in this generation are always greater than they were in last generation, but they're going to be even greater in the next generation. Um, there is nothing that we can't throw in the garbage technologically if we choose to, <laughs> and I hope we make that decision early and often with this generation of stuff. 